I am here, yes. I hear you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Well, you have one hour. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So let's get started here. So first, you got Rob going on. Rob just, uh, taught you some uh, good information on how he wins all of his trading championships. So I'd, I recommend you guys take him up on his offer. I'm going to do a little bit something a little bit different. So how many of you guys have seen the Ichimoku uh, webinar that I usually do where I teach you, like, how to use Ichimoku? All right. So a lot of you have seen it. So that's perfect. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to pick you one of my favorite longs for next week and one of my favorite shorts for next week. Now, I have a ton of different longs and shorts, but I'm going to walk you through what I do for my HSIC members on a weekly basis, okay? Now, before I go any further, how many people are in here are already HSIC members? And all HSIC mean, mean, it stands for is Hubert Center's Inner Circle. Let me just see how many people I got in here. Okay, yes, no, yes, no, no. All right, so it's a mixed crew for me. Perfect. All right, cool. So before we get started, so I'm going to first give you a blanket warning disclaimer. Warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson. <laughs> if you attempt to trade, you are probably going to lose some money. You might lose a lot of money. So make sure that you do read CFTC Rule 4.41. You should never trade with more money <clears throat> than <clears throat> you can afford to discretionary lose. All right? Now, there are inherent risks with trading. This is not called guaranteed wealth generation with zero risk. It's called trading. We speculate, okay? So you should never uh, trade more money than you can afford to lose, all right? Now, I like to make the warning disclaimer a little bit more serious, a little bit more hardcore, and say that, your trading career may end up like a bad country song in reverse, where your wife leaves you for your best friend, your kids grow up to hate you, your dog's going to die because there are no cats in country songs, and then they're going to repossess your Ford or Chevy pickup truck, and then they're going to foreclose on your single wide or double wide trailer if you attempt to trade. Now, if you understand the disclaimer, give me a yes. That way, if the CFTC or the NFA, if they edit this presentation, or I should say audit it, they won't edit it, um, they'll say, okay, he did a, a fine job of scaring them to death uh, and the actual risks of trading. All right, cool. All right, so let's get started here. Now, uh, before we get started, my name is Hubert Sanders. I know we got a, uh, a multi speaker event and we all mailed in for it so you may not know who I am so I'm just going to give you a, a brief small history of who I am and what I do and then I'm, the rest of the time all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scan the markets okay so and, and that's all I'm going to do that's it I'm going to go through every single market that I usually trade I'll even go through some of the markets that I don't participate in but I like to look at and then I'm going to try to weed down through the ones that I like the best I'm going to make a list of longs a list of shorts live in front of you and then I'm going to pick one of my favorite longs and one of my favorite shorts that you can trade at next week all right and then after that <clears throat> if you want to ask questions you can ask questions and if you want me to look at your symbol after I do my homework live in front of you and then you'll give me your symbol now here's the rules for the symbols only one per line and it has to be in caps because go to webinar uses about an eight point font and I can barely read the bag on thing all right does that sound fair Fair shake, fair trade. All right, cool. So my name is Hubert Centers. In the trading and investing niche, I'm known as a guy that has a no uh, BS approach to trading and investing. And it's not really by design. I'm just a redneck from Kentucky, so I keep things really simple. Plus, I'm dyslexic. So one of the skill sets that I have that are in my wheelhouse is I can take something that's very complicated and break it down in its essence and make it simple to use. So that's kind of how I'm wired up. All right, now. When I was growing up in the hills of eastern Kentucky, uh, I was not dirt poor, unlike how a lot of people think. Um, I was uh, born in a middle-class family, and both my mother and father worked at a company called American Standard. Uh-oh, my little, let me, uh, let me fix this real quick. My little drawy thing sometimes will go out of whack, so I'll show you. A lot of people ask me what little drawy thing I use, and here's how you pronounce it if you... Uh, that's what it looks like, Wacom or Wacom. So sometimes it'll get tied to all six of my screens, and I really only need it tied to one of my screens. So give me a second there to fix that. Nope, I don't need it on four. I need it on five. There we go. All right, cool. There we go. All right, there we go. That thing is gonna, it makes it hard to draw when it's all on all six screens. 
Okay, so uh, like I said, uh, my mother and father were both factory workers, and um, they worked for a company called American Standard. You've probably seen the, the, the faucets, the commode, the plumbing fixtures, and stuff like that. I worked there for a couple summers. I hated it. Putting four little bolts in one little plate all day long drove me batshit crazy. I was like, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. If you work at a factory, I'm not down on it. It just drove me crazy. I'd rather sweep the floor as um, put four little bolts in one plate all day long. It drove me nuts. Now, I could have been a, a coal miner, and I was like, man, I don't really like uh, deep, dark places with the um, – Likelihood of either being electrocuted, drowned, or a cave-in, or dying of black lung, right? So I, I decided not to do that. Now, there are a couple other risky endeavors that you can make a lot of money in, but they, they're they just as risky as trading. Uh, would have been the weed business, the marijuana business, uh, would have been the meth business, um, or would have been the moonshine business. So all three of these have inherent risk that if I were, if I were decent at them, if I would have done them, I'd have probably ended up in the federal penitentiary somewhere in an orange jumpsuit fighting Big Bubba over who gets the top bunk and who gets the small bunk. So I decided not to do that. So what I did when I was uh, 17, I started out here, and I decided I wanted to be like everybody else when they're young. I wanted to be a millionaire. And I was like, all right, I'm going to figure out how to do this. So I left the house, and I started doing just some old-school apprenticeships with all kinds of different people in different industries, different walks of life, different businesses and stuff like that. And I kind of figured out how they were making money, and here's what I found. Uh, there were three state levels that they, they played in, three different groups, one two, and three. Uh, some of them did trading and or investing. Some of them did real estate, and some of them did businesses, and quite a few of them did a combination of all three, okay? So quite a few did all three, so I recommend that's what, that's what you do, because that's what I do. So if the trading and investing, if it's smoking me, which heads up, not all of us professional traders make money all the time. Actually, none of us do. A lot of times, uh, We'll make money three or four uh, months out of the year, and we'll try not to give much of it back after that. So if I'm getting smoked in trading and investing, my real estate will be doing pretty good, or my businesses will do pretty good. Or if my businesses are down, I can focus on trading and investing. What I try to do on a yearly basis is take money from trading and investing and reinvest it in real estate and or businesses. So in businesses could be you own the business or you invest in businesses, because I invest in a lot of Silicon Valley businesses and stuff like that. Now, um, so... Uh, you, I've never met anybody that's went from like start to finish, whatever your finish number is, in less than about eight years. All right, it's gonna it's gonna be blood, sweat, and tears. Heads up, you're gonna have to work your ass off. There, there will be work involved. It, believe it or not, praying about it and thinking about it and wishing about it, the cash will not fall from the sky. Unlike how my thing, how my kids think it is generated around here. All right, so I've also never seen anybody just gradually over time just increase <clears throat> where they just gradually get better and better over time. This is what I found in my journey. A couple of them were just lucky in the right place at the right time and were smart enough, smart enough to figure out that they were in the right place at the right time and they just added fuel to the fire, okay? Most of the other guys that I did old school apprenticeships with or volunteered or just they helped me, I helped them, or I paid them, had enough failures, they got pissed off enough, they're like, I'm going to figure this stuff out. And then their journey to success was just all over the place, but they kept their eye on the prize or their goal that they were trying to accomplish, okay? Now, on here you see some collages of different people that I've either worked with, apprenticeship with in our masterminds, or um, we have worked with them or they have worked with us. So I don't show you any of this to impress you. Because I don't think it's impressive at all what I've done. I do it to impress upon you. If a fat redneck from Kentucky can be successful, I think you got a shot too. You're just going to have to work your ass off the same way I did. Now, when I was a kid, I watched a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman. So around uh, the office here, we affectionately call my office the Batcave. Not because I'm Batman, but because I watched a lot of these uh, these shows I just told you about where they have these secret bookcase doors that lead to your secret lair to uh, to try to overtake the world, right, or your secret hideaway. So what you do in my house is you walk downstairs, takes about five seconds, and then the whole bottom of my house is an office, okay? There you walk downstairs, and there's this little bookcase door. You, you click that book and, uh, and push that button. 
and it opens up into about an 1800 foot square foot office and then that's where I work out every day now I know it's childish and immature and stuff but I don't really care I'm, I'm kind of into it all right so that is my background and my story so now if you will tell me a little bit about yourself right now currently what do you trade the most of do you trade more stocks options futures or forex what do you trade the most of and now I trade them all in different capacities but tell me which one you trade the most of, stocks, options, futures, or Forex, really quickly. Okay, all right. All right. A lot of stocks and options, guys. Few futures, guys. All right. Okay, now, now while you're done that, also tell me, if you don't mind, what is your preferred time frame? Is it, are, are you long-term investors? Are you a swing trader? Or are you a day trader? Your preferred. Now, I trade them all. I trade all the markets and I trade all the time frames. But we all gravitate towards a certain one. We're like, eh, I like to swing trade options. Eh, I like to swing trade stocks, right? Okay. I just want to know who I'm talking to here on this webinar. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, the last thing I would like your help on is tell me where you're currently at on this trading pyramid. Now, level one is where you are really effective at losing large sums of money. And your burn rate is very fast. Level two is where you have slowed down your burn rate, and now you're losing small amounts of money, but you're not profitable. Level three is where you make some, and you lose it all back. Or you make a little, lose a little. Make a lot, lose a lot. It's treading water stage. Okay, It's the most dangerous stage to be stuck at, in my opinion. Level four is your P&L is starting to go from a, a lower left to upper right, but you got some jaggy drawdowns that you got to deal with. And then level five is is making a killing. I don't know you personally. I don't know what a killing is to you. It could be $200 a day. It could be $200,000 a day. I just don't know you personally. All right. And then level five is the, the peak of our profession. Welcome to the club. You've made it. Congratulations. Now, once you've got it up, try to keep it up. All right. All right. Now, now I know where you're at. All right. Now, I'm going to walk through how I do my homework on a daily basis. I think it is very, very important for you to have both a long list and a short list right now currently the market is in up mode with small pullbacks but the small pullbacks are also very profitable if you're in the right stuff okay so what i'm going to walk you through is an hsic member what they get from me on a weekly basis and a monthly basis so i'm going to walk over here and this is what an hsic member gets with me all right it's just a, a membership site all right so number one you just go to hubertcenters.com and you click uh inner center inner circle members and then what you do here is number one there is a daily member video a daily member video okay now the daily member video how many people are in, in here on my free daily videos so i've got two distinct videos so i got a free daily video and then I have a member video, okay? The free daily video is about two or three minutes, and I'm walking you through what I'm looking at, and I'm just giving you some tips and tricks of how to trade. Now, the member video is usually three to 12 minutes. It's usually about three to eight minutes, and it's more detailed, and um, I dig deeper into what I'm doing, okay? So that's the member video, and that's sent out Monday through Thursday, okay? So if you're on my free video, it's just a better version of the free video, much more detailed and much more information. And then I'm in my live trading room. I'm in my live trading room on Mondays and Wednesday mornings. Monday and Wednesday morning from 8.15 till 8.15 till, 8 till 10.30 a.m. That's Monday and Wednesday. And then what we do once a week, we call this thing called Technical Tuesday, which is what you're about to experience here live. Okay, And Technical Tuesday is anywhere from... 35 to 45 minutes, sometimes it'll go an hour, where we actually go through all the individual markets, we scan them, we rank them, and we go, oh, that looks like garbage, oh, that looks really good, oh, that looks terrible, and that's called Technical Tuesday, so you've got access to me three days a week, live trading room, Monday and Wednesday, 8 a.m. till 10.30, and then Technical Tuesday is usually on 7, 7 p.m. on Tuesday, and then if you, um, if you miss anything, it's all recorded right over here, it's in the recorded events. So there's the live trading room. There's Technical Tuesday. Now, this is what we're about to go through right here. It's called the scans and picks. Can everybody see this? Scans and picks where it says new longs. These are new fresh longs that we found. And then it says I've updated this 224, 2017 at 727 p.m. East Coast time. Does that make sense? Okay, so I first have to describe what we're going to go through here on this watch list that HSIC members get. So this column here is the new longs. In other words, 
it is above or below the cloud. Well, in this case, it's above the cloud at least one day. Okay. We want the ADX to be above 20. Okay. And then if you, if you go from a new long to a continuation long, that means it's above the cloud for at least five days and trending very well. And then these swing longs over here, these are the ones that were longer term longs. Okay. Longer term longs. We want to buy pullbacks. Uh, breakouts. These are our longer term holds that we are focusing on. Does everybody understand that? So right now to make sure that everybody understands this, to tap in one to five, tap in one dash five into the chat box. That just means it's above the cloud, one to five bars. This means five plus, and this means this is a longer term hold. Okay? Okay. Now, the shorts are the exact same, just opposite. One to five below the cloud, five plus days below the cloud, and these are the longer term holds. All right, so let's get busy finding this. Oh, and a lot of people ask me what my favorites are, so I'll asterisk these. Like, there's a there's a favorite. There's a favorite. There's a favorite. There's a favorite. Okay, um, on the short side, there's a favorite. So let's walk through this. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through how this works really quickly. Well, it won't be quick because it takes time. But anyway, all right, let's dig in here. Let's discard. All right, so does everybody see my trade station? Does everybody see my trade station? All right, so here's the exact process that I go through. Now, before I go through this process, I need to teach you a little bit about the ADX, okay? Do you see the ADX down at the bottom? And I've got my own special ADX, but this is just the normal ADX. One of the things that's going to help you when you filter through this stuff is there's going to be way too many trades and you can't do them all. So you want to filter through for the best ones, okay? So I'm going to do the day trade. I'm going to do a daily chart for simplicity purposes, and this is usually how I do it anyway. And then what we want to do is, if the ADX number one, you see this uh, green line going through here? Let's format this, make it a little bit easier to see. Let's style this bad boy, make it thicker. Okay, there's that. And then we'll make this yellow line here a little thicker there too. All right, do you see the green line? Type in 20 in your, in your, in your box right now, 20. Just type in 20. All right, All right. The, your ADX threshold is going to be 20. Above 20 means your thing is trending. Below 20 means your thing is, is not trending well. Okay, It doesn't mean it can't go higher or lower. It just means you may or may not get stopped out of that thing. So what we're going to do is if we can see this right here, we've got ETR. It broke above the cloud, and it, the, the ADX is starting. It bottomed out here, and now it's coming back towards 20. You can still do that trade. Okay, All right. All right, so let's take a look at some of these other things. So I'll show you what, how this works in real time. So what we're going to start off here is we're going to start off with the ES. So it's above the cloud. You see where the ADX is above 20? That means it's trending well. Now, it's not going to give you the direction. The cloud will give you the direction. The ADX will give you how it's acting, okay? So I'm going to shrink this down so it doesn't take up so much of my charts. So this is how I actually go through Technical Tuesday. Now, we start out with the S&P, and we go, S&P looks good. It is above the cloud. It's above the turning. It's above the standard. Uh, so it's bullish in nature. I like the index. Now, when I'm looking at index futures, there's four of them, Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. I have to gauge which one I like long and which one I like short, which one's the strongest one and which one's the shortest one or the weakest one. So S&P looks good. Now, if you compare the S&P to, say, the Dow, to your eyes, which one looks stronger, the the S and P or the Dow? S and P or the Dow? So for me, I would say the S and P. Know that S and P, the S and P held the purple line and did not go below the purple line. So if I then go over here to the Dow, the Dow broke the purple line. So so far, S and P first, Dow second. Okay. It's exactly good eye, doctor. One or two. One or two. All right, now let's take a look at the Russell. Ooh. All right, what's the first thing to notice on this chart? It's above the cloud. Mm, this is sideways. Notice how right here, I'm going to put this on here. Notice right here that the ADX dipped below the 20 line, which is telling you, like, hey, man, you can trade it. Probably not going to work well just because I'm not in the in the best trending mode in the world. It, it's sloppy, choppy, grind your account to dust. You see the difference? So this is a sideways trade. So I would stay away from this index. Okay? Stay away from that index. Now, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Oh, it's the strongest one, 
right? So, and this has not changed. If you follow me on my free videos or if you're an HSIC member, you know that it's one of our longer term trades, NASDAQ long, right? So if I pull this back down here out of the members area, you see NASDAQ strong and long. We want to buy the NASDAQ on either pullbacks or breakouts. I don't care either one. We just want to be long that bad boy. Does that make sense? Now, short, if you wanted to short, I could say, okay, I like the Russell to the short side. It, it's a hedge that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, so I don't put it on, on the longer term shorts over here. You could if you wanted to, okay, on the, the swing shorts. All right, so then for next week, I'm not changing any. The NASDAQ is still along, and the Russell is the weakest of the indexes, okay? All right. All right, I use the default cloud settings, and I'm just using the default ADX today. All right, let's move into the DAX. The DAX, ooh, a little pullback here on the DAX. It's still in a major uptrend. See how the ADX is a little sketchy here? So I would stay away from the DAX, just because the ADX is just a little questionable there. It's not, it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just not perfect. And it pulled back. It did pull back on the standard line held. That's a good sign. It's above the cloud. But why would I trade anything other than the NASDAQ right now? The NASDAQ is the strongest thing. All right, let's take a look at the Euro Stocks 50. Euro Stocks 50. What's the first thing that jumps out at your eye? Hey, you might want to be careful here. Not the most trending instrument right now in the world because the ADX is below 20. All right. Does it make sense so far? All right, let's move on to the Euro Bund. Ooh, looky here. What do you notice in this? Crossed above the cloud, pulled back to the turning line, and is acts like a rocket ship right now. And it came from a non-trending environment below 20 to above 20. That's a good long. That's a good long. That's the Euro Bund. If you don't trade the Euro Bund, don't worry about it. You can trade an American market. You can trade the 10-year note or the 30-year note. So let's move into the 10-year note. The 10-year note, mm, not a perfect setup, okay? All right. So let's take a look here. Ryan, I'm not really sure what you're talking about, brother. You, you, my asterisk or may asterisk, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. All right. So in this case situation here, you've got a price action that's in the cloud. For me, I try to pass on those. Also, do you see another reason why I should leave this market alone until it gets to start trending a little bit better, all right? Or until it gets above that cloud. So for me, the 10 years to just pass. It's okay, there's tons of things I can trade. I'm just gonna pass on that market. All right, let's take a look at the 30 year note. Mm, 30 year note, for me, is still a pass. It's in the cloud. It's a better short than long right now because it's it came from below the cloud here, right? So I think this one's going to eventually go back below, but right now it's transitioning from a short into sideways into the cloud, and it's going to make its decision either above the cloud or below the cloud. But right now, as it's going into its transitional period, i got to leave it alone. The cloud is the Ichimoku cloud. All right, let's go into the gold market. <laughs> okay. What do you notice on the gold market here? It's a decent little long trade. All right, so you've got one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, seven bars above the cloud. We broke through this most recent resistance area at 1251, which I was waiting on. And I've got a lagging line confirmation, and it's saying it's trending pretty well. Does it make sense? So if you trade futures, gold looks good next week. Don't worry about the ADX going up or down. That's not a big deal. The ADX is not telling you direction. The ADX is just telling you if it's trending. If it, It's just telling you the RPMs like, hey, it's in trend mode. And a trend can be either up or down. Above or below the cloud will tell you the direction. ADX will tell you about how much gas it's got in the tank, in other words. All right? So gold looks good. I like that. That is a good trade for next week. All right, let's move into the silver market. The silver market here is a good long, and we've got targets on it at 1853 to 1920. Okay, so this is our target zone that we are going for on our long trades. Will GLD follow GC? Yes, it will. And I'll do I'll do your guys' symbols as soon as I get through my homework. Okay, I'm walking you through exactly how I do it. 
and then you guys can ask questions and then do symbols as soon as I get done. Okay. All right. So silver looks good, and then I'm going to go into platinum. What's platinum look like? Black. Platinum looks pretty good. It's non-trending right now. The ADX is 1234. If you wanted to do the trade, it's a better long than short. Can you explain the ADX indicator? Um, yep, at the end, ADX, if it's above 20, your thing is trending. If it's below 20, your thing is non-trending. That's all you need to know. That's it. That's the expl explanation on the ADX. All right, let's move into, so for platinum, you could trade it. You'll probably get stopped out, but it looks better higher than lower. Let's take a look at copper. All right, so copper went from being a, a major uptrending to sideways because the ADX just dropped. Okay? Let's take a look here at uh, the energy markets. Okay? And we're going to see where crude oil's at. Where's crude oil at? All right, now, according to the ADX, is it trending or non-trending? So this 20 line, this red line went below it. So if it's above 20, it'll be yellow. If it's below 20, it'll be red. So what should we be doing with crude oil? Nothing. We should be going, crude oil looks trashy. It, there's no sense in us touching it. We should just ignore it. Just pass. Now, now if you held a gun to my head and said, you're trading one way or the other, which way are you going to do it? Okay, I guess I'll do it long since it's above the cloud. So it makes sense. And all we're doing is we're going through systematically one by one market to make sure we know what's going on. All right. All right. Let's go to next. Let's take a look at Natty Gas. So Natty Gas is what? Is it a longer term short? Yes. It's trending. And if it'll bounce up here to $2.86, we'll reshort it again which will be the turning line. But as of right now, our, uh, a bunch of our targets have already been hit, hit. And you can see it's trending, so it's probably going to continue on its downward uh, downward spiral to lower price. Okay, now let's move into the meat markets. Okay, meat markets. Uh, FC. FC stands for feeder cattle. All right, Feeder cattle uh, was a major uptrend. You're into the cloud. Looks like next week feeder cattle is going to be turning from an uptrending to a downtrending instrument. So on feeder cattle, I will probably get short next week. Let's take a look and see what live cattle looks like. Live cattle is still holding up, but it went into a non-trending environment. So it's a better long than short. If I can get this thing to hook back up, I can go long feeder cattle. Or live cattle, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at bacon. Ooh, look at bacon. So ADX is above 20 and is still above 20. It's trending above the cloud. If bacon, which is called lean hogs, right, lean hogs, can touch the cloud right here, I would like to get long. So far, it has not touched the cloud yet. Okay? All right. Now we're moving into the grains. Corn. Corn. Should we be trading it right now, yes or no? Probably not. Uh, the ADX is just so low on it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're just going to pass. Uh, soybeans, we should pass too, even though, all right, now, if we compare corn, corn is a better long because it's above the cloud, okay? If we take a look at uh, soybeans, soybeans is a better short because it's below the cloud, but it's also non-trending, okay? Now, if you go into the wheat market, wheat is trending and it's above the cloud, now, it broke below the turning and the standard, so I'd like to pick it up here at 432. Okay. Now we're going to move into the soft markets. All right. The soft markets would be coffee. So what is coffee? Coffee is a brand new short right here. Brand new short. Now, the ADX is a little low, 1677, but since it's a brand new short, I would probably still trade it knowing that it could potentially hook back up for me. So I would trade this but I would watch it very, very carefully because I don't want the ADX to just go dead flat low on me and have coffee trade sideways on me, okay? Now, the one thing I like about the Ichimoku cloud so much is, number one, if we look back at the NASDAQ or anything else, it's got a really strong trend. The Most indicators are lagging in nature, and the ADX is lagging in nature. Ichimoku is one of the few indicators that is not lagging. So Fibonacci's are not lagging, Elliott Wave is not lagging, and Ichimoku is not lagging because here's why. Number one, this is the past. This is what happened in the past. This is what's happening 
right now called the present, and this is telling you what's going to happen in the future. Okay, it's telling you that it's going to rise over time, and if it was to sell off, this would be the support. Past, present, future. One of the few indicators out there that is not lagging in nature. Now, it does have one lagging component. That's the lag right there. But the other ones are in real time and future pacing, too. All right, so let's get back to where we were at there. All right, um, uh, sugar. Should we be trading sugar right now? Eh, probably not. 1541, but it's a better short than it is long. All right, let's take a look at cocoa. Cocoa. Easy short trade, easy short trade. Just continues to move lower. It's trending. It's probably going to eighteen hundred. Okay, orange juice, uh, OJ, not OJ Simpson, but orange juice. This is a, a good looking short with a target of one forty. And then last but not least, there's cotton. So those are the main futures contracts that I go through. Okay, and I, I grade them on on what I like. So if you're asking me what's my favorite futures for next week, Nasdaq long. Okay, I like the Nasdaq long. That one makes sense. Okay, uh, I also like uh, gold long. That makes sense. That's a new fresh. That's a new fresh one that you can do right now. Uh, and those would be my 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 longs on the short side. Russell probably to the downside just because it's so weak. Okay, all right. Now if uh, we go on to other markets, let's take a look. This is a new fresh short in the currency futures. This is the euro. So one, two, three, four days ago, we had a euro short below the cloud, and the lagging line is starting to trend again. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I am now going to show you how I go through all of the stocks. Now, I've already got my own list of stuff that I like, but what we're going to do here is we're going to format this. We're going to go left click, boom, 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 click. So all I'm doing is I'm clicking that right there. And this is the S&P 500, all the stocks. Do you see where it says new below, and it goes all the way down here, and it says new above, new above, new above? So those are the ones we're going to go through to find you one good long and one good short for next week, okay? Does everybody understand the process so far? I, don't, I want to make sure I don't confuse you. Now, I do this at least once a week, and I usually do it once a day, all right? All right, so we're going to take a look at APC. All right, APC looks pretty good. I like it. Now, the ADX is a little low. Now, notice how the ADX went down, and it's got this nice little cup on it, and it looks like it's going to start rising and go through that 20 area. Uh, Troy goes gold long and NAS long. They don't go together. Well, uh, correlation-wise, I would agree, Troy, but correlations are correlations. They couple and decouple all the time. It doesn't make sense for the bonds in the markets to go up either. Um, but the correlations, um, correlations couple and decouple all the time, so you can't really rely on correlations, unfortunately. Yeah. I wish it was that easy to make my job really easy. Oh, that's nice. going up. Oh, short gold and bonds, too. <laughs> all right. All right. So, A, uh, so that, that's one trade that we like. All right. So, we like APC. So, write that one down on your list. APC. That's not bad. And then what I'll do over here, I'll come over here and I would add to my, to my new longs, I would add APC. Now, APC, the, the, the trending environment is not perfect, okay? But we could still add it for a watch list for next week. So I would just go APC. Boom. So I've got a long list, a short list, and a watch list over here. So on my long list, it's the same thing as the, the members get. Here's the new longs, okay? Here's the continuational longs. And here's the longer term loss. So our goal, our goal is to turn the new longs into a continuational long and the continuational longs into longer term longs. So let me walk you through how that looks. So Nike, when we found it, was a new long three days above, and then five days above it is a continuational long, and now it's a longer term long for us. Okay, same thing when we found Johnson and Johnson three to five days above plus five days, longer term long. Does that make sense? That's all we're doing when we're scanning this stuff. <laughs> and it's a systematic approach. So, uh, all right, so that's, uh, let's go back here to APC. All right, APC would be a new short on, on this situation here, and it should be over here, APC, APC's right there. I put it on the long because I, I messed up. Let me remove it from the long side. Boop. There you go. Should have went on my short side. 
I was thinking along in my head. I just got it backwards. All right. C O T Y. C O T Y. What do you think? It looks terrible to me as uh, as a as a as a any type trade, a long or a short. It's dead flat and the ADX is going, don't touch me. Too neutral, right? So we pass. Now, one cheater method you can use is we've got new above and below. You notice where the ADX right here is above twenty? That one's probably going to be decent where this DVN probably won't even qualify, right? So we can save a lot of time by doing this too. So I can go DVN. Eh, DVN. Should I be messing with DVN? Eh, probably not. You see the systematic approach? All right, let's go through, let's go, let's, let's go down here to FCX. Okay, that's a good short. FCX would make a brand new fresh short. So then what I'd do is I'd come over here. I would then put FCX on my list. Now these are all in all in uh, alphabetical order on the new short, and I would do FCX, and that would be my new short. And then I would update my list over here for the HSIC members. So here's the new fresh short there, right? And I'd do the same thing, and I just update it in real time, and then everybody gets to see it. And then everybody wants to know uh, when I updated two twenty four twenty two thousand seventeen at seven twenty seven p.m. That's updated as soon as I update. It. All right, so let's go through the rest of these. All right, so we've got, back over here to the scan list, um, GGP. ADX is too low, do not qualify. All right, HPE, Hewlett Packard, trending, hmm, drop below the cloud. I would disqualify this one because it's an earnings play, okay? So I would say it's a massive uptrend. Somebody didn't like earnings. It gapped down, and I would just watch this when I would make it a bracket trade. It's trending, but it jumped the cloud, which I don't really like to mess with much. So I'd just be like, ah, not my thing, not my wheelhouse. All right, MRO, ADX is too low. Now, if you wanted to go short, you could, but the ADX is too low. NAV is a short ADX. It's probably doable. It's probably doable. It's not perfect looking, but it's not bad. Okay, SE, I miss it. SE, ADX too low, pass. TG, or TDG, okay, trending, uh, ran into overhead resistance and rolled back over. I don't like this gap, and I don't like that look. So for me, I would probably pass on that one also. So half of it is, uh, I would say three-quarters of it is systematic, and about a quarter of it is just good old-fashioned experience and judgment going, nope, don't like the look of that chart. Does the ADX change value intraday? What do you do if it does? Yeah, but we're just talking about uh, swing trading right now. All right, ADP. ADP. That's a good-looking long. Do you see that? That is a good-looking long. That would be a good favorite going into next week. ADP would. All right? Does everybody understand? So write down ADP for a good favorite long for next week. And then we just go through all the rest of them. We go AES, AES, eh. Non-trending, not worth our time. FE, non-trending, but it looks like a token. It looks like a token. It was a low here, and it's starting to move back up. We could watch that creature. Okay. The slope and the direction of the ADX doesn't usually matter unless we're breaking above or below the cloud, and it was low, and that's starting to come back above. I just want it to start to go back through 20 is all I want it in order to confirm that it's going to start trending and acting well. Okay, FL, new above, ADX is too low, but you could put it on your list. JBHT was a longer-term long. It's also now a short-term long. And then here's one, NWL, breaking above. ADX is a little low, all right? And then what we do is I add all of these individually to my list. Oh, here you go. This is a nice one, too. PAYX, paychecks, all right? Paychecks, that looks good, and it's trending. All right, and then we got two more. STZ, eh, I don't like it, it's choppy. And then TAP. Now, I take all of that information, and I copy and paste it over here to the long list, okay? Okay, now, what I do there is now I go through my, my new long signals, and I qualify, and I call. In other words, I cut the weak ones. If they don't fit my criteria perfectly, I'm going to call them, and then I'm going to update my list, okay? So then I want to go through this. All right, so these, are, these will be the new longs for next week, okay? Gold looks okay. Trending, that's not bad. And I can already see there's a couple here. 
13, 18, 17, 13. See, I could probably call those. I just got to make sure I'm looking at it. Uh, why are the triggers at 20? They just are out. All right, uh, Mexican peso. That's a new fresh long, one, two, three bars ago. There you go. So that's a decent, that one looks good. So I'm just going to roll through these. ACN, good. ADM, eh, it's kind of, it's too sideways. All right, so it's on the list, but I'm going to remove it from the list because I just don't like the sideways action of the entire price action up in here. So this is a little bit of the experience going, nope, not, not, not pretty enough. ADP. All right, so here, ADP. This would be, I'm, I'm going to grab my uh, posted here because I told you if you come to this webinar, I'd give you one good long and one good short. So ADP would be one long, okay? And then I'm going to see which one is my favorite long here for you. ADS. Mm, that one's not bad either. Okay, ADS. I'm just walking through and grading these in real time. No, no, it wouldn't be a favorite, but it still qualifies. AMT, AMT looks good. Okay, I would say off of the brand new signal, the brand new signal. Um, when you when you have a moment, I missed the purple indicator description. It's just part of Ichimoku, Bob. It's just part of Ichimoku. Uh, would that be GC on futures? Uh, yeah, it would be uh, uh, gold. Gold futures, yep. All right, so now I'm just rolling through and trying to find you the best long that I can. Now, here's the question, because I told you I'd give you one favorite long and one favorite short. Currently, I would probably say the freshest new favorite long would be ADP. You do have a little bit of overhead resistance, so it's going to have some work to get through right here, right? But it's just a one-bar close, okay? I'm going to consider anything that's, one to three bars above the cloud as a new fresh long, okay, for you for next week. Yes, and, and Ichimoku is on Ninja. All right, ADS. ADS looks good, and it keeps on powering up, so I like that. Let me move my little, my little drawing thing over here, okay. All right, AET. No, that wouldn't be a favorite. A AMD. I do like AMT, okay. Uh, Citigroup wouldn't be a favorite, but it's still qualified long. That one's not bad. It's just now starting to trend pretty well, CCI. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then pick the favorite here as a crew. Okay. COL acts pretty good. ETR, that thing is on fire. But look, that ADX, this is one that we've just decided like, hey, the ADX is terrible, but, man, it's still rocking. So there's always a special case scenario right but as a rule you're not going to see you're not going to see very many that have red mixed in on there on me right every now and then i'll be like eh, this is just too strong to ignore right and the adx is just laggy on that one so etr acts pretty good exr all right adx is about to cross over that looks good fdx okay fe all right i like fe i like fe Nice little move, and the ADX is about to be with you. So FE, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out which one's our favorite for next week. Okay, no, no, no not, not a new favorite. FL is not bad. ADX is a little low. FSLR, be careful with this creature. This sucker got us last week. It is switching back like crazy. Look, it went down below the cloud. It went above the cloud, below the cloud, and then back up above the cloud. This one right here is a tough nut to crack, and the reason it is is it's, it's, it went it's, it's went from non-trending to just right now it's trying to figure out which trend it's going with, and it looks like up. Just be careful with it, okay? MDT, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right, I've got my list kind of okay. Ooh, that looks really good. PYX. I may actually give you two longs and two shorts. I don't like that. That looks like trash. You're gone, sucker. See ya. T, T looks okay. Uh, I don't like the ADX killing you. Dink. All right, ZTS. Okay, so I'm good. All right, so here's our list. So um, I'm going to say ADP, and I'm going to say PAYX. Boom. That's the that's the two that I like that are brand new, fresh long. So write that down. ADP and PAYX. Okay. Now. That is a new fresh long. Now, if you're wanting to go for a little bit more confirmation, then I would say ADS is strong and is breaking out and looks 
really, really good. Okay. Okay. I also like AMT. AMT looks pretty good. And then I would say CCI and then FE. But I told you I would give you one great long. I've given you two really good longs for next week, ADP and PAYX. And then I got your secondary, ADS, AMT, CCI, and FE. All right. Let's go to the shorts real quick. All right, to the shorts. The new fresh shorts would be, uh, this is the best short that I like right now, would be TRIP, T-R-I-P. Hold on, it's, uh, it's updating here really quick. Okay, so trip short with a target of $29. So TRIP would be a short with a target of $29. So there, I've, gave, I've given you one long and one short. Let me tell you a little bit about HSIC really quickly. And it looks like I've got about 15 more minutes. So let me talk about HSIC for um, five minutes here. And then I will answer all your questions. And I will also... Um, do your symbols for you. So now what we've what we've came up with here is I've came up with a list for the HSIC members. These are the new longs. These are the continuational longs, swing longs, new shorts, continuational shorts, longer term lo longer term shorts. Does everybody understand what we just went through? All right. So that's the play. All right. So Hubert Center's inner circle, and this is what you get with the Hubert Center's inner circle club membership you get uh, number one you get daily member videos so that you can stay on the right side of the markets uh, live trading room so that you can see this stuff working in your own live working account uh, we give a technical Tuesday once a week every Tuesday to help you save time and find better swing trades which is basically what we just did we went through a a, a shorter version of a tech Tuesday um, member only discounts so that you pay wholesale and not retail usually we give up to 50 percent discounts on most products and then you get ongoing support via live webinars telephone and emails and we always over deliver period all right uh, when and where daily trading member only trading videos Monday through Thursday uh, live trading room Monday and Wednesday at 8 a.m. 8 15 a.m. till 10 30 and then technical Tuesdays are usually at 7 p.m. East Coast time and all this stuff is recorded so if you can't make any of this stuff it's not a big deal it's all recorded and posted in the recordings under your members area uh, member only discounts up to 50 percent on most products all right. Uh, now, what I did is I did some research on uh, tons of other folks that do the same thing that I do, the competition, right? And uh, everybody prices them differently. So what I did is I found the lows and the medians and the highs, and I said right, daily member videos will range anywhere from $79 a month to $197. That's the range I found online. Live trading room Monday through Wednesday, anywhere from $97 to $397 a month. Technical Tuesday scans and picks with a watch list updated and kept up to date. $97 to $297 a month. Just depends on that. Uh, member only discounts up to 50% on most products and or services. I don't know a whole lot of people that do that, but that would be that your savings. Now, total monthly range would be $770 a month or $2,382, depending on if you do all that or all the cart. Some people do all the cart. Some people do all of it included. So what I've uh, set up here for you is a special for you today of $7 for 30 days. So it's a $7 trial for 30 days. There is a catch. I can only take 46 of you because I don't like to have to answer uh, 9,000 questions at once. I like dealing with uh, uh, a few people at a time. All right, so that I can actually answer their questions. Currently, we have 46 spots available. Okay, now it's a seven dollar trial for 30 days, and then it auto renews at $97 a month, and you get all of that included. Okay, now you all you have to do is you go over to hubertcenters.com forward slash trial, and you get all of that stuff for seven dollars for 30 days. If you like it, keep it, and you'll be billed $97 after 30 days. If you don't, we make it very easy to sign up. We also make it very easy to cancel, okay? So all you have to do is give us a quick email or a telephone call, and we'll send you on your way. It's not a big deal. Does everybody understand the offer? $7 for 30 days. You get all this stuff to try for 30 days, and then after that, it's a $97 subscription. 
If I'm making you money, keep me around. If I'm not making you money, cut me loose. It's that simple. All right, pretty simple. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. All right, questions and answers. Are the live sessions recorded? Yes, they are uploaded in the resource area 48 to 72 hours. They're actually usually done within 12 hours. Uh, what markets are covered? Stocks, options, futures, and Forex. I give you the underlying stock. It is your responsibility to pick your put or call and your strike price. Uh, is it good for swing, day, or both? I do both, so it's good for both. What skill level uh, do I need for this service? Uh, we service both beginner, intermediate, and advanced folks. All right. So those are the major Q&As, and then here are some reviews. I had a great day. I made uh, 1980 bucks on a short on ZB and gold. I was up 350 on three contracts on the YM on FOMC, but I held too long, and it came back. Uh, I'll, get, I'll get more out of it next time. And then here's one from Pete. I just wanted to say, as usual, you lived up to your word and over-delivered on this course. So there are some testimonials for you here is your link and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and answer all your questions the link is above my chart right now you can read it you either see the value in this or you don't it's pretty simple I have got seven minutes to help you okay all right let's see here so here's the rules questions you can ask on the fly symbols one per line that has to be caps all right all right, here, TTWO, TTWO, I've got seven minutes. TTWO is a good long. I would wait for it to, to hit the 55.89 or to go above 58.64, S-N-D. If I miss you, I'm not, I swear I'm not trying to skip you on purpose. It's just there's, there's, uh, there's 770 people in here right now. So that, that, there's a lot asking questions uh, this would be a decent long at 16 wait for an intraday signal NVDA NVIDIA is a long now I would I would have to go to a smaller time frame here on NVIDIA on a 10 minute signal look like at the close on Friday it was a decent long I would wait for a, a 60 minute to be long above a buck 10 a buck 10 on NVIDIA okay AG man lots of questions AG is a a decent long with a stop of nine twenty seven and a target of twelve bucks. P at P A Palladium. That one does not work for me on trade station. I don't know why. D I S D I S uh, Disney good long with a stop currently right here at the cloud at one oh seven. Target would be one seventeen. D D S. DDS would be, it is a short, but it's non-trending, so be careful with that one. THC, THC is a good long. Oh, look at there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a good continuation of long right there. That's a good long. That's a, that's a nice find. Uh, long with a stop of 1970 and a target of 20 bucks. Get long, ABI. I see you in your chat room, Monday. Thank you. And a good, okay, uh, ABWN, ABWN. Whew, man, that's a that's a that's a that's a wild ride right there now, that's for sure. Um for me it would have to close back above uh two dollars and sixty cents in order to play with that one. Plus it's a penny stock. I don't do a lot of penny stocks. Uh excellent webinar, thank you. How far down on FCX FCX? FCX will probably go to eleven bucks, eleven bucks. QQQs is the same thing as the NASDAQ. It's going to go higher, probably 135. How how long have you been using the cloud? Years, years. Uh, AA, all right, I've got five more minutes. Keep hitting me. I'll keep doing it until Jeanette comes on here and goes, leave, you were leave. Um, AA is, AA right now is a watch, but don't trade. It needs to either touch the cloud and give us a long signal or go back above 3657. Uh, Micron Technologies. Is a better long than short. Needs to go back above 22, um, 42, or go back down here to the cloud and buy it there. A K A M. Okay, Akama Technologies is a um, decent short with a stop of 66.44 and a target of 60 dollars. A M Z N. Amazon is a good long. I would be a buyer on Amazon at 8.31.93. Uh, stop would be around eight twenty five. Target would be nine hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, PA does not work. Um, PA doesn't work for me, Arthur. Sorry. AL. 
ALXN. ALXN is non-trending. ADX is too low, and the sideways of the chart scares me. I would leave it alone. Uh, don't you want the lagging line to break the cloud to before trading it? Thanks. You don't have to. No, that's just a confirmation. That's just a confirmation. That's all that is. Uh, v, Visa, good looking long stop of eighty four ninety five. target $95, $95. CVX, Chevron, uh, fresh short. It, it says it's non-trending, but it's close. It's 17. That's close enough to 20 in order to get you, get you by. Um, it's a good looking short with a stop of 113 and a target of 103. Just be careful. It's, it's, um, how do I calculate targets? I figure out what my risk, my risk is and I multiply that times Two, three, four, or five. T S L A. Tesla. Tesla is a good long. Now it broke the it broke the standard line. So I would wait for it to either touch the cloud or go back above the standard line. So for me, Tesla is a watch for it to trade back above two sixty four oh seven or buy at the bottom uh, there when it tests the cloud. Uh, IP, uh, P, I've got three more minutes. IP is in the cloud and non-trending pass. A-A-O-I, that's a weird one. Uh, it's a good-looking long, trending well, too. Good-looking, good-looking. Probably goes to 70 bucks. Stop will be 39.37 with a target of 70. J-A-C-K, uh, Jack is a uh, breakaway short to the downside, and it's just now starting to trend. Probably goes Jack in the Box. I would say probably goes to eighty-seven and then seventy-three. Do you use the standard setting on the cloud? Yes. AAPL Apple is along. Uh, you should have bought it Friday, uh, right here at one thirty-five-ish, right there in that area. Um, the current stop on Apple would be one twenty-eight. Things probably going to go uh, north of one fifty. What is your favorite trade? Mm. What do you mean, Larry? Exactly what do you mean? R-I-G-L. My favorite trade is the trade that's making me the most money. <laughs> and that's going to change from day to day. Um, you're talking about on the list that we looked at earlier? The list that we looked at earlier for next week, ADP and P-A-Y-X long, and then T-R-I-P short. Yes. Can you look at R-C-A-R? R-C-A-R. C-A-R. Helps if you can type. And I'm talking about me. It's penny stock. I don't really pay, play too many penny stocks. Um, for me, that also looks like a wild ride. Just be careful on that stuff, man. Uh, that stuff will get you. Um, I would go long above $4.69. Warrants and stocks on ABW. Okay, cool. Got you, Ryan. Yeah. Yep. Uh, VZ. VZ is a short um, it would need to break back below 50.50 to be a really good short okay b m y all right i'm out of time it's 11 o'clock here is your offer uh, you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash trial and you get a seven dollar trial for 30 days and you get access to me for the next 30 days and if you want to keep me, it's $97. And if you don't, you just cancel me and kill me, right? All right, I'm going to do Tesla, and then I'm, I'm, I'm done. T-S-L-A, because I don't want to be the one that throws us off track. Tesla is a long, but it needs to get back above 264.07 or let it drift down to the cloud. All right? Good luck. Hope it helps. I'll see you guys on the next one. Jeanette, it's all yours.